Scamming is a far too common occurrence in RuneScape even today. Scammers are ravenous and will manipulate, lie, and go to extreme lengths to extract RuneScape GP from their victims through any means possible. With a real-life monetary value being tied to the GP, it's easy to see how this game can attract a shady crowd. Scammers nowadays have evolved beyond the RuneScape trade window and will try to lure their victims into voice calls. I'm gonna ask you to do. It's going to change your RuneScape career dramatically. I want you to hit accept bro and I want you to see why. Try and get them to go to some random YouTube video with the promise of free GP leading to them clicking a phishing-esque link where a keylogger is installed. They will try spoofing the RuneScape homepage so that victims log in on the fake page which then sends their login information to the scammers. There are no links these scammers won't go with some of them even threatening the people who expose their scams with real life violence or worse. Today we're not going to focus on the modernized scamming tactics, we're going to travel back in time to the World 2 days and look at some of the more popular scams from around that time in no particular order or ranking. Let's jump right into some of the dumber scams, some scamming classics that even people who haven't played for over a decade will remember. The first scam is pretty simple, someone stands in a populated area in the game and spams that they can double any money you give them. They get your money in the trade window, they don't double it, and they run off. Some scammers would take a more cunning route and double smaller amounts of money such as 10k or 50k for example in order to build that trust with their victim. Once the scammer doubled the smaller amounts of GP a few times, the scam victim might throw in 1 mil to be doubled and get scammed out of it. Up next we have armor trimming. This goes hand in hand with doubling money in terms of stupidity, but I'm not calling anyone stupid. Fun fact, when I was 10 years old I lost my first pair of adamant legs this way. My whole day was ruined at the time and I ended up logging off for the entire day. I was so upset. It's actually funny as hell looking back though as they were like 6k from a shop in Al Karid and I was destroyed over it at the time. The way this scam works is a person comes up and says they can trim your armor for you. To naive young kids this was believable because game knowledge wasn't so widely available at the time. There were some websites available such as Sal's Realm, Tippet, and Rune HQ early on to name a few but many kids just didn't want to do the extra research so laziness. To top this off, a lot of young kids were free to play and saw advanced players running around with gold trimmed armor with seemingly no way to get it in free to play. So having a person trim the armor for you must be how all of these players were getting the armor, right? The naive person hands the untrimmed armor over and the scammer leaves without ever trimming the armor, because it's not possible. While this scam relied on a person being naive, the next one is a result of the victim's own impatience and quick moves by the scammer. I don't even know what the hell you would call this scam, it really didn't have a name, it involved the number 4 being added onto the end of a coin stack. At a quick glance this resembles a K, so what scammers would do is throw up let's say 100k for example in order to buy a granite mall. Then they would quickly remove the exact amount to knock it down to 10,004 GP. At the time there were no giant red exclamations or alerts in the trade window to alert the victim of a change and the scammer usually removed and accepted the new trade very quickly. The scam didn't stop at 100k though as that's just an example. For other numbers such as 900k the scammers numbers just changed slightly to make it 90,004 GP instead of 900k for example. The scam relied on a scammer's timing and skill in swapping the GP and hitting accept in a fast manner, usually timed around the same time they thought the victim would hit accept, so it would instantly go to that second window. At the same time, the scam also relied on the victim rushing through the trade window, spamming the accept button, and just wanting to get the trade over with so that they could move on and sell something else or go back to playing the game. People spamming the accept option back then were just begging to be scammed as probably 25% of all trade offers you would get back then would be potential scammers, 50% would be low ballers or people trying to trade you their junk items for your item, 20% would be people that just wanted to look at the item, and 5% would maybe be legitimate offers. And yes, I just pulled those percentages out of my butt. Point is, there were a lot of scammers salivating at the thought of taking your hard-earned GP. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button and maybe leave a comment below detailing how you've been scammed. Also, check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content at only $3 a month. 
Each $3 pledge equates to what I make from about 1,000 views on YouTube in terms of revenue, so it makes a huge impact. Alright, thanks guys. Back to the video. The next scam type was pretty uncommon. I'll just call it the raw material scam. There were multiple variants of this, but I'll throw out a few examples and you guys will kind of get the idea. A player needs their dragon stone turned into an amulet of glory, or their rune bars turned into a rune plate body. They hand the raw materials over to a more experienced player who turns out to be a scammer and takes their raw materials. It was really annoying with rune bars as those were about 20k each at one point, so you would lose quite a bit of money. Keep in mind this was before the grand exchange so it was much easier to sell the finished product such as that amulet of glory or rune plate body than it was to sell the raw material such as the dragon stone or rune bars. It was still very possible it wasn't super hard but it was much easier to sell that finished product. This one is a simple scam where a scammer runs in and says they will give away GP if they are shown a player's inventory or valuables. The scammer puts up a decent amount of GP, the victim puts up whatever's in their inventory, usually their valuables. The scammer accepts and without thinking, the victim accepts due to getting overexcited at the prospect of a chunk of free GP and spamming that accept offer button. Variations of this include free dragon bones or other free items, but it's the same concept. The victim has to show their inventory for the bones and gets tricked into accepting the inventory of bones at the cost of whatever is in their inventory. This next category is just going to be item lookalikes. The item lookalike scam involved the scammer typically noting an item that looks like a more expensive one. Popular items were the black highwayman cape with the purple trim on the bottom being noted to look like an obsidian cape, red dehyde chaps being noted to appear as dragon plate legs, and noted willow logs looking like magic logs as back in 2005 willow and magic logs looked virtually identical. I'm fairly sure this was the reason for magic logs initially getting the graphic rehaul and the sparkles that we know today. I think they even did this scam with the rock hammer bot from Slayer Masters and noted it to look like the granite mall as well. There were other variants too that I'll get into here in a second and I'm sure there's some I missed too. This type of scam even extended into the Barrow sets which from their release in 2005 and for a few years afterward were the best sets of armor hands down and were worth millions of coins except for carols. That set was worth usually around one mil as it wasn't very popular at the time. They would typically do full Varax, but instead of the Varax skirt, they would put a black plate skirt in its place. The more brutal version of this was with full Guthans, which back around 2005 to 2006, the set hovered around 9 to 10 mil, sometimes more, with the Guthan spear being 6 to 7 mil, sometimes more. They would replace the Guthan spear with a leaf bladed one, resulting in a loss of let's say 6 to 7 mil or more for the victim, which was a ton of money in those days. These trade scams and some other ones actually saw a resurgence in the early days of old school RuneScape before the Grand Exchange when the trades happened in the trade window near Varaz. Rock Bank. The next scam is probably the most simple scam on this list, I'll just call it the quick removal. The scammer would very quickly remove an item that was being purchased and try to hit accept right when they thought the victim would in order for the trade to go through quickly. The victim is left with nothing and the scammer gets a nice cash stack or item. So while the last scam was simple and anyone could do it, this next one was a little bit more creative and actually involved two scammers usually hanging out in or near a bank. One of them will be buying an obscure item for an insane price such as lore remains or a poison chalice. The reason they want the item in question to be extremely obscure is because they don't want random people located in the bank already having the item in their bank and then trading them. They want the victim to buy the item from the second scammer who is barely out of sight of the first scammer. They would sell the obscure item for a ridiculous price, but less ridiculous than what the first person was buying it for. An example would be a guy inside the Varrock bank buying a poison chalice for 2 mil, and a guy just out of view a little ways selling it for 500k. In the victim's head, someone is going to quickly sell that chalice to the poor sucker in the bank and make a nice chunk of GP, so they have to be quick, right? Therefore, they can't teleport and get the items themselves, as by the time they get back, someone may have taken advantage of this great deal. They buy the item quickly from the second scammer for 500k and quickly trade the first scammer. Only the first guy does not trade back and they eventually leave. The scammers make out with your 500k in this example and you get a useless obscure item. I think most of these scams only worked due to most victims being very young. I know these scams did get a few adults and teenagers though as sometimes it would be tiring to have to keep typing the same message in a bank for hours trying to sell something and at certain points you just wanted to be done so that you could go back to actually playing the game. That's about all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, liking the video helps tremendously and will help it get to more people. 
Let me know in the comments if any of these scams or another type of scam got you back in the day. This is the RuneScape Historian, checking out. Thank you guys. Bye.